Welcome to another Glenvale Criterium hosted by Carnegie Caulfield Cycling Club. There's me wiping off the lens. Big shout out to the people at GoPro. Um, this is the new GoPro 11. So I hope the quality is pretty good. And the battery, oh my days, the battery lasted the entire race plus some. That is insane. Thanks GoPro for sorting sorting out the battery because unfortunately the batteries used to last like 50 55 minutes not quite enough for an a grade criterium that runs for about an hour now the batteries lasted like an hour and then had like 23 percent left on the battery so maybe an hour and 20 maybe push it push the envelope to an hour 30 thanks gopro uh you guys are pretty quick with the uh oh, pretty good with it uh, the quality looks pretty good too, so I'm happy with that. Any uh, we are back at Glenvale, and yes, I have seen the memes. Um, I'm not, I'm not a meme lord myself, but I know that the meme lords do love to poke fun at people like me, who do a scene by scene or a scene breakdown, crit breakdown analysis of their criterium at a four corner crit in a business park. I have seen the memes. Yes, they do make fun of people like me doing this. Uh, and yes, I am quite offended. That there should be a royal commission into meme lords for their hurtful comments on people who do scene by scene breakdown analyses, 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 analysis of their crit. And I'm quite offended. Regardless of the meme lords, uh, we're going to get into this crit breakdown analysis of Glenvale Criterion. David Randall is also carrying a camera, as you can see in the top left corner. Uh, I don't have his power data numbers because I don't have the ability to. I didn't ask him. I assumed I, sh I probably could have, but I didn't want anyone to know what his numbers are. Confidential. Uh, he's, he's, he's my boy. He's my camera boy. And I don't want anyone to know his power data because it's confidential. So if you want to know his power data numbers, you have to ride up next to him and see what he's see peer over his shoulder, see what he's, see his power data numbers. Doing that is probably would be pretty would be pretty funny. It's like cheating on your exams. It's sort of the same thing as peering over the sitting next to the nerd, the smart kid, and uh, looking over their, their their exam paper. That'd be pretty funny. Anywho, we are at Mulgrave. Uh, we are quite a far way down this long line of riders. Glenvale is a pretty quick circuit, and we were doing, we were averaging like 47 something? Almost between 47.0 and 47.5. Somewhere between that. Let's say 47.3 average speed. And it's quite quick, you know? So, moving up for the Peloton, you know, at 50 kilometers an hour in some parts, it's going to be pretty difficult. This part where it's slow down a little bit. Look at all the gaps forming through the riders and everyone's just chilling, maxing out, relaxing on. Um, so everyone's chilling, so it's quite easy to move through the pallet in there, go up around the outside. There's David again. Hey David, um, he's right up near the front. He always, he always knows how to sit. Cyrus Monk flying through. He's wearing the Warrigal kids jersey. Um, so, big, big ups to that jersey, love it, what a, what a comeback for that jersey. Um, and he's just slotted right himself in front of David Randall, so well done to him. Watch out for the trucks parked on, on the course. Unfortunately, we can't move them, we just put cones around them, which is, which is alright, that's fine. Coming around this corner here, there's Hayden Booty Egg, Buddy Egg, I don't know how to pronounce his name actually. And he's, he was doing pretty big numbers at the moment. He's, he's flying for Nero. He's flying the flag for Nero. He's got his teammate, Lockie Sky, from Sydney. He's been staying somewhere near the peninsula. Just being in Melbourne because Melbourne's cooler than Sydney. It always is. It always will be. And suck it, you guys. It's raining heaps there. So, as I record this, it's pouring with rain. There you go, Aiden. And I feel like this could be a good effect fun on a Sunday. Chasing down Aiden. Yeah, there's nothing more than I love than Aiden surges when you pull through and he comes surging past like Sergio. That should be his name. 
Let's get a name change for him, Sergio. And he's followed by Paul Speed. And I'm trying to chase him down. And in the, uh, in, in the David cam, it seems as though Jensen Plowlight came storching through. Storching? Scorching through to go around that corner. He's chasing pretty hard. And watch out for that truck there as well. I don't know what the hell is going on on the circuit today. It must be a very busy day. Got to watch out for Paul Speed, though. He's, he's, he's a good man in the breakaway. Uh, speed by name, speed by nature. But on the front, Thomas Lombardi. Another one of Cyrus Monk's... Of athletes? Yeah, athletes is the best way to put it. He coaches him, so he's, he's, he's going alright. He used to do bodybuilding or, you know, that weightlifting max competition. Pretty, pretty cooked. Um, really strong legs. Really, like, envious of his calves. They're very, just, mecha me strong. And in the David Randall cam, it looks like he's moved a little bit further back to not do any of the chasing. Well done, David. Be crafty as always. And then Lewis Bulls in front of him. Looks like looks like you've got a good chase on my hands. Going pretty quick around here. And in front of him though, that looks like it's fresh crits. Let's get a close up on that. Can I get a close up? I can. Oh, here we go. I'm in the I'm in the full screen view now. That is definitely fresh crits. Steve Flack. Number 22. And th thanks to Carnegie Caulfield for getting us some um, permanent numbers. You know the. These numbers here are the ones that you have to purchase when you do your first crit. Pick them up at, at the crit when you do your first one. This isn't your first one. You just pick them up when you get there. Um, these are our numbers to take home, you know, like a Tupperware at a restaurant. And uh, we don't use the, the, the restaurant cutlery anymore. We bring our own cutlery. And we've got number. You just put one on, I suppose. Everyone did just put one on. They're quite small, so for the first time in history, these are the numbers that are actually like a good size to be put onto someone's rear end. And we also get a uh, number card uh, for the for the back of the bike as well. That's got a transponder. So it hit, when you go past the finish line, it goes tick. So when a whole Pelican goes through, it goes tick, 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 tick. Very cool. Finally, Carnegie, thanks, thanks for that, Carnegie. Unfortunately, we don't have a universal one across all of Australia. Not quite yet. We're a bit behind. As, you know, silently. A bit behind. Anywho. We're still in the, I'm still in the breakaway with Aiden, Thomas, and Paulie Paul Speed. We should get a collab fresh crits. Um, I'm asking for one now. Uh, David is, like, midway through. If we go around this, going around this corner, watch out for that car and that car. I don't know why people keep parking their cars here. What is out here? I don't understand. On a Sunday, why why do people leave their cars? It's not like there's a club nearby or a pub. You didn't come here to drink. Well, maybe you did. But if you came here to drink, you wouldn't just leave your car here. You would have just driven back. Because why would you... There's nothing out here. I don't know why you would just drink here, leave your car here, and then walk home? The nearest house isn't for a few blocks. It's a long... Drunk walk. Anyway, back to the race. Digression over. Coming down this downhill once again. That look at that flappy number. Did you run out of pins? You must have run out of pins. I don't know why you'd have a flappy number like that. that's at least 30 watts. 30 watts at 50 kilometers an hour for that flappy number. That is astronomical amount of large watts missing out there. Anyway, I'll. I'll try and move past that oh it's flapping my face i can't not think about it. in front of him is mark o'brien he did a few uh hill repeats in the, in the danny nogs there's steve flack collab where is it uh we are still there i am there so our breakaway is ended if you didn't say oh it's in the top left screen i didn't bother to look there i got so caught up in seeing what mark o'brien was doing that i forgot to mention that our little breakaway got a little caught um just thought, ah, meh, I'll, that's not going to last anyway, so I'll just, I'll just quit at it while I'm ahead, and there's some gaps being opened up here, so it's a bit of a really quick counterattack surge, and I couldn't really be bothered trying to chase that down, so I'll just flick some of them through, and then hopefully jump on the back of that line, sit at the back for a bit, get some recovery, my number wasn't 
pinned on that great. So, oh, no, I was pinned on pretty good. Thanks, Tom. You're, yeah, that's pretty good. You, you, you'll get better at it. Not quite Marco spec. That's a great number pin. And here we go. Anyway, we're back, back at, behind Paul's speed again. We've scanned forward quite a bit. Cyrus Monk on the front. Going past Matthew Sherwin and Aiden Boudier. Going past everyone. Let's see what's going on here. I don't want to move to the front too much. Oh, and guess what? Someone's made an attack on the left side hand screen. You can't see it in the, in the top left, but you can see. Because that's David's camp. David Randall off the front. And I'm chasing him down. I took a pretty horrible line going that corner, as you saw. That's because someone was on my right inside hip. And um, they were sitting there. I didn't want to annex them by chopping their wheel off. So, probably could have just moved left more, but I didn't want to annex them. There's David there. We are off the front. We've got a good gap at the minute. And as you can see, I didn't even walk through my power data numbers, whatever you can see here. Bottom, you can see the power. It's like three second average or something. Distance, heart rate, 169. That's fairly solid heart rate. 170, that's what I'm sort of, oh, this is starting to hurt. Now, 170 is a number where I can sustain for quite a while, but it's gonna hurt like the dickens. Then you can see 48, 49 kilometers per hour. Gradient, 0%. I think it's a little bit behind. It lags a little bit. Negative 1 there. It was probably about right for that section, but it's a bit behind. So think of it as being, oh, that back there 20 seconds ago was negative 1% gradient. Top is like a... It's like a power graph. That's the entire ride you can see there. So I've still got one more peak before I go bloop. And watch out for more cars. Allegedly, they're looking for the church. So, all right. I don't even, I don't even mention all these power data information on, on the screen. As you can see, the power graph. That's the entire ride as a power line graph. So you can see there's another peak. And then it goes, bloop. 400 watts is the 30 second average. But down the bottom is the current average, uh, current three second. Now, this is the bit I want to ask all you viewers. As you can see, that fella is telling me to follow his line around the corner where he sits in this sort of road position, hugging that left gutter and then turning sharply around the corner. Is that quicker than going all the way wide, cutting the apex and going wide again. His way sh shortens probably by like 30 meters shorter distance. But I'm thinking if you go wide, cut the apex and go wide again, it's smoother. You can stay on the pedals a bit easier. It's just a smoother way to go around the corner. Like, like this way, go wide, cut the apex, rather than going, hugging the gut and cutting the apex. I'll leave it to you people in the comments. What do you reckon's faster? And he, that that guy it was Gustav. I'm pretty sure. I, I not, not can't be certain. I don't really have my ear to the ground, uh, but I think he was in the Wollongong Worlds, representing maybe South Africa. I think. Um, and he's he's come back to Melbourne to do some crits because Melbourne is way better than Sydney. One because it's not raining as much as it is in Sydney, and number two always will be always has and forever will be better. And that's me in front right there. Uh, we're seeing David cam David David was full cam. Hiding my power number numbers for this moment. And as you can see, I reckon I've got the coolest socks in the Peloton. Stormtrooper socks, Star Wars socks. Red Stormtrooper there. Pretty bad bar tape that I've done up for myself. Pretty bad. Um, and then uh, we go around this corner. I got the coolest shades on too. So got the Ray-Bans on for this crit. Pretty sick. All right, what's happening at this race? We are a fair way down this line of riders here. Not too happy about it. I want to try and move up some. And there goes Rylan Mosby. Watch out for him in a sprint. You, you know, it gets, you got to watch out for him, man. He, he can put up some big numbers. Apparently he's a, uh, 800 meter runner before he transitioned into cycling as most runners do eventually all runners will eventually get on the bike and do that full-time because 
We love to exercise and you can exercise a lot more on the bike than you can running because of knees, ankles, bones, shins. Cycling's a lot easier on them. So if you're addicted to the moving, cycling is better for it. And everything's bunched up a bit here. So me and David are gonna take different routes to move the front. Let's see who does a better route. See who, see who ends up where after we uh, change paths, do take different lines, different follow different wheels. All right, you, you won't be able to notice or tell, maybe you will, but David Randall's camera the go on the GoPro 10 cuts out just about now. Um, but on my GoPro 11, it continues forward. It still rolls. So it's a big selling point for the new GoPro 11. It lasts more than a Glenvale. Only a little bit more than a Glenvale, but it gets the whole thing. What a selling point. Shut up and take my money. Here we go around this corner. Sorry, Spunk's behind me. You can't hear it, but his wheels are probably the loudest free hub. It has the loudest free hub in the world. Seriously, they're so loud. And he says, when I say green light, you go. Pretty scary words, so I definitely oblige. You can't tell, but I'm nodding in, in acknowledgement of it. There goes Matthew Sheeran, straight around the outside. And he goes, green light. So, time to charge through the peloton. And I'm not too sure what Cyrus wants me to do. He just says green light and go. So, I'm assuming that I'm going to do an absolute burner, take him all the way to the front of the peloton, and going from that far back to the front is a lot of pennies at this at this time of the race. Look at this gap coming through. Luke Burns is about to pull through for a turn, but Pat Lane, Pat Lane with the 20th sense, notices I'm coming through with Cyrus on my wheel. He was, he was going to do a massive burn on the front, and I was just going to fly in through the front of the pallet, and he was going to take a flyer. I was still on the pedals because hopefully I'm just begging that someone drop the wheel and no one followed Pat Lane through. But I'm basically done here. Pretty much toast. And I look back and everyone is behind Pat Lane. So that was a good moment to go. But unfortunately, Pat has got a 20th sense. And unfortunately, somehow a new Cyrus should be coming through. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it would have been a good time to go because I could see Luke was going to have to pull through eventually. Um, and I'm trying not to get myself annexed by uh, everyone going around my right side. So this is the most dangerous part of the race for me because I just did a massive peel. I'm pretty much cooked and riders who are going coming back through the peloton are at a risk to people who want to move forward. So that's where a lot of crashes happen, so be careful. And hopefully you're watching Steve Flack and up for a collab. Um, and uh, I'm basically at the end of the peloton. So that was that was my my race pretty much done. I had two tickets, two matches, two bullets, whichever analogy you want to use. I used one and a half to follow Aiden in that breakaway. Who should get his name changed legally from Aiden to Sergio because he surges. I don't like it, Aiden. I mean Serge. So here we go. Uh, I don't. I can't really see what's happening in front of every, in front of me. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, meme lords. Me meme me, bro. Meme me. I just did a crit analysis breakdown of a crit that I didn't win at a four corner crit in a business park. Meme me, bro. I am a meme, meme lords. Take it. I want to see this picture snapshotted onto your new onto your next meme. There's Mark. Probably did a big pull for maybe Pat. I don't know who inform was sprint who we we're gonna lead out for. There's Kerry Canapis, the big Cypriot. He was, he's crafty, you know. He's got to watch out for Kerry. Don't take him to the finish line. Ask Aiden. Ask Aiden about taking Kerry to the finish line. And he'll tell you, damn it, Kerry. Because he because Kerry rolled Aiden in the Kobo crit. Pretty funny, actually. And uh, this is the end of the race. Jensen took the win in front of Gustav. And then I think third went to Alex Smith. Alex Smythe. And then fourth was Cyrus. So, uh, unfortunately... My flyer didn't work in the sense that Cyrus got slingshotted to the front of the pallet and then had a good attack. But it was in a good position for the finish anyway. Um, and that's the end of the video, boys and girls and non-binaries. Hope you enjoyed. See you not next week, but the week after. 
for a new Glenvale. And as I recall this, it's not next week, it's this week, and then the week after I will probably do another Glenvale. Alright. Ciao.